our planet earth the home to diverse forms of life animals plants fungi microorganisms and much more 30 million species inhabit the biosphere ranging from microscopic bacteria to blue whales do we know them all have we given them names is there a systematic way of studying them in this lesson you will learn about the classifications of living organisms by the end of this lesson you will be able to explain the history of the classification of living organisms describe organisms using the five kingdom classification system use the hierarchical classification system to further classify organisms into subgroups and explain the names of organisms using binomial nomenclature organisms differ in form structure and mode of living so they need to be grouped according to their similarities the grouping of related organisms helps to study evolutionary relationships and to identify them in the 4th century aristotle the greek philosopher classified animals based on whether they live on land in water or in the air but his classification was unscientific as it placed unrelated organisms like fishes crocodiles and whales living in the same habitat in the same group what is classification classification is the division of living organisms on the basis of characteristics into groups and subgroups a characteristic may be a particular form or function for example some animals have five fingers this is a characteristic the process of classification continues using a new characteristic each time all living things are classified on the basis of their form and function but forms and functions evolve with time evolution is the change in inherited traits from one generation to the next it was charles darwin who put forward the idea of evolution in 1859 in his book the origin of species most life forms that we see today have evolved to survive better hence classification of life forms is closely related to their evolution biologists such as ernst haeckel robert whitaker and carl woese have tried to classify living organisms into broad categories called kingdoms carolus linnaeus classified all the living organisms as plantae and animalia ernst haeckel proposed protista to include eukaryotic unicellular organisms copland introduced monera to include all the prokaryotic organisms in 1969 whitaker proposed mycota to include fungi this led to a five kingdom classification proposed by whitaker which is still used today
these kingdoms were formed on the basis of cell structure. Mode Source of nutrition and body organization. Organisms can also be classified on the basis of their hierarchy. Kingdom breaks into phylum for animals or division for plants, class, order, family, genus, and species. Hence, the basic unit of classification is species. A species includes all organisms that are similar enough to breed and produce fertile offspring. Another important landmark in the history of classification of living organisms was the development of the system of scientific naming or nomenclature introduced by Carlos Linnaeus. When we name an organism, we write the name of the genus first and the species later. Both of these are Latin words. This method of naming an organism is called binomial nomenclature. Certain conventions are followed while writing scientific names. The name of the genus begins with a capital letter. The name of the species begins with a small letter. When printed, the scientific name is given in italics. And, when written by hand, the genus name and the species name have to be underlined separately. Now, let's take a good look at the five kingdoms. The kingdom Monera includes prokaryotic cells which lack organized nucleus and membrane-bound cell organelles. Some of the common monerans are bacteria, blue-green algae or cyanobacteria and mycoplasma. Monera are autotrophic. They get their nutrition by synthesizing their own food. They are also heterotrophic. That is, they get their nutrition from the environment. Members of the kingdom Protista are algae diatoms and protozoans. Protists include plants and animals. Their mode of nutrition can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. They are unicellular and the simplest form of eukaryotes. Some protists move with whip-like flagella, hair-like cilia, or finger-like pseudopodia. The next kingdom, fungi, includes mushrooms, rhizopus, and muca. These organisms are not plants and are not capable of performing photosynthesis. Most fungi are multicellular and eukaryotic. They have cell walls made of a tough, complex sugar called chitin. Fungi decay dead plants and animals to derive their food. Hence the name saprophytes. There are some fungi that live in a mutual relationship with blue-green algae. Both fungi and algae Together are known as lichen, and this relationship is called symbiosis. The kingdom Plantae includes all plants 
that are non-motile and autotrophic. They are multicellular and eukaryotic with cell walls made of cellulose. Kingdom Animalia is the largest of the kingdoms in terms of species diversity. This kingdom includes all the animals that are motile and heterotrophic. They are multicellular and eukaryotic without cell walls. Wow! Look at the variety of trees, creepers, shrubs and orchids. I never realized so many of them even existed on this planet. Our planet has an amazing variety of flora and fauna. Even if you were to consider just the plant kingdom, the sheer number of species available would be overwhelming. Scientists and enthusiasts have always tried to organize this vast domain of information into a structured body of knowledge. It is an ongoing effort. In this lesson, you will learn about the classification of the plant kingdom. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the classification of the plant kingdom and identify the characteristics of each subclassification. Members of the plant kingdom are called plantae. They are set apart from other organisms by two unique characteristics. They are all eukaryotes and they use chlorophyll for photosynthesis to make their own food. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants use energy from the sun to convert water and carbon dioxide into sugar and release oxygen into the atmosphere. This is a plant tissue. As you can see, plants are multicellular and have cell walls. The fascinating world of plants or plantae is divided into two sub-kingdoms. These sub-kingdoms are further divided into five distinct classes. This classification is based on specific criteria. These criteria evolve from answers to four main questions. 1. Does the plant have distinct parts like stem, roots and leaves? 2. Do these parts have tissues that transport food and water? 3. Does the plant bear naked seeds? 4. Are these seeds enclosed in fruits? Now, let's look at this classification in detail. In 1883, Eichler classified the plant kingdom into two sub-kingdoms, cryptogamy and phanerogamy. The sub-kingdom cryptogamy includes plants with hidden reproductive organs. These plants do not bear flowers or seeds Cryptogamy are further divided into three groups Thallophyta, Bryophyta, and Pteridophyta. Thallophyta are the simplest of plants that do not have a well differentiated body design. They are mostly aquatic. Do you see something floating in that glass of water? 
That's algae. As you can see, algae do not have leaves, stems or roots. Algae can be single as well as multi-celled organisms. They are autotrophic in nutrition. Algae belong to the group Thallophyta. Lamidomonas, Spirogyra, Eulothrix, Cladophora, and Cara are all examples of algae that are included in Thallophyta. Let's move on to the next group. Look at this thin carpet of vegetation on the rock. Do you know what it is called? It's moss. You may have noticed moss on walls, rocks and barks of trees. Now, look at it closely. You will find that it resembles a plant. That is, it displays a stem and leafy structure. Moss or Fenaria belongs to the group Bryophyta. Bryophytes are often called amphibians of the plant kingdom as they require both aquatic and terrestrial conditions for the completion of their life cycle. Their body is differentiated to form stem and leaf-like structures, but not true leaves and roots. Vascular tissues, which are special tissues for the transportation of nutrients and water, are also absent in bryophytes. Bryophytes include Rickia and Marcantia. As you can see, this plant has well-formed leaves. What do you think it is? A thallophyte or a bryophyte? Well, actually, it belongs to neither of the two groups. This plant is a fern and it belongs to the third group under cryptogamy. This third group is known as pteridophyta. Horse tails and marsilia are also pteridophytes. Unlike thallophytes and bryophytes, the plant body of pteridophytes is differentiated into stem, leaves and roots. They also have vascular tissues to conduct water and food to the different parts of the plant. Like thallophytes and bryophytes, these plants also have naked embryos in the form of spores underneath the leaf. What's that? A ripe tomato? Tomatoes have a lot of seeds inside them. Seeds are the result of the reproductive process. This makes the tomato a phanerogam. All plants that develop seeds and have well-formed stem, leaves and roots belong to the sub-kingdom Phanerogamae. Phanerogams contain embryo along with stored food that helps the embryo to germinate. Based on whether the seeds are naked or enclosed in fruits, Phanerogams are further classified into gymnosperms and angiosperms.
Here are some nice green gymnosperms. Wondering what I'm talking about? These deodors. They must be really very old, but they look so fresh and young. But why shouldn't they? They are evergreen pines. Pinus, cycus, and other coniferous trees are also gymnosperms. Gymnosperms get their name from two Greek words. Gymno, meaning naked, and sperma, meaning seed. As you can guess from the name, gymnosperms bear naked seeds and are usually perennial and woody. The opposite of gymno in Greek is angio, meaning covered. Hence the word angiosperm means covered seed. And that brings us to the second class of phanerogams. Angiosperms are highly evolved plants with flowers, fruits and seeds. They are also called flowering plants. Let's look at angiosperms in a little more detail. The flowers in angiosperms develop into fruits with seeds in them. Embryos in these seeds have seed leaves called cotyledons. These cotyledons supply food to the growing embryos when the seeds germinate. Angiosperms are divided into two groups based on the number of cotyledons they have. Plants with seeds having a single cotyledon are called monocots and those having two cotyledons are called dicots. Let's look at some other differences between monocots and dicots. We will use a corn seed as an example of monocot and a bean as a dicot. Examining the parts of the corn seed and the corn plants, you can see that the corn seed is a single whole seed. On the other hand, the bean can be split into two parts. That's because the corn seed is a monocot and the bean is a dicot. The manner in which they grow and spread their roots is also very different. In fact, as you can see, the leaves of the monocot and dicot plants differ from each other as well. The animal kingdom or Kingdom Animalia, as it's biologically known, is the largest kingdom in terms of its diversity in species. This kingdom includes organisms having cells, without cell walls, as well as those that are heterotrophic, multicellular and eukaryotic. Most of these animals can move around on their own. Human beings are included in this kingdom. In this lesson, you will learn how the animal kingdom is classified. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Explain the classification of the animal kingdom Name and classify the invertebrates into different phyla and Name and describe the five classes of vertebrates. All the animals are classified on the basis of level of body organization, that is, 
the cellular or the tissue level symmetry type of body cavity called coelom presence or absence of segmentation and the presence or absence of a backbone the animal kingdom called animalia is classified into two sub kingdoms invertebrata and vertebrata The subphylum Invertebrata is classified into Porifera, Coelenterata, Platyhymenthes, Nematoda, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, and Echinodermata. Invertebrates are characterized by the following features. absence of a notochord and absence of a vertebral column porifera get their name from two words pori meaning holes and fera meaning bearing the phylum porifera includes cycon spongilla and euplectella they show minimal level of tissue grade organization though they are multicellular they are commonly called sponges sponges are non motile and are generally found in an aquatic habitat they are covered with a hard skeleton made up of silica or spongin fibers Sponges have pores all over their body. These pores lead to a canal system that helps in circulating the water throughout the body to bring in food and oxygen. Cylinderates get their name from two Greek words, koilos meaning hollow and enteron meaning intestine. The phylum Cylinderata includes hydra, obelia, corals, and sea anemone. Cylinderates live in an aquatic habitat, which may be fresh and salt water. Corals belong to this group and live in colonies. while hydra live in solitude their bodies are radially symmetrical meaning that all the halves of the body have the same design their bodies have outer and inner layers which enclose a central cavity called gastrovascular cavity In hydra locomotion occurs with the help of finger like processes called tentacles Platyhelminths get their name from two greek words platy meaning flat and helminths meaning worms The phylum platyhelminths includes tapeworm and liver fluke platyhelminths are either free living or parasitic free living animals include planaria and parasitic animals include liver flukes their bodies are dorsoventrally flat and ribbon like and they are hence called flatworms their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical meaning that the left and the right halves of the bodies have the same design their bodies have three layers of cells that form differentiated tissue this is why they are called triploblastic animals 
flat worms have no body cavity, hence called acylomates. They lack respiratory and circulatory systems. Nematoda get their name from two Greek words, nema, which means thread, and ode, which means like. The phylum nematoda includes ascaris, enterobius, and vucararia. Nematodes can be free living or parasitic. Parasitic worms in humans are roundworms and pinworms in the intestine of humans. Filarial worms in lymph and limbs cause elephantitis. Their bodies are long and cylindrical, showing bilateral symmetry. Nematodes are triploblastic. Their body cavity is pseudocelome. They also lack respiratory and circulatory systems. Annelida get their name from the Latin word annalis, which means little ring. The phylum Annelida includes earthworms and leeches. Annelida are found in a variety of habitats, fresh water, salt water, as well as on land. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical. The organs of Annelida are differentiated in a segmental fashion, and the segments are lined from head to tail. Annelida are triploblastic animals. Annelida have a true body cavity called coelom. Annelids are characterized by the presence of a circulatory system. Arthropoda means joint legs. This phylum gets its name from the Greek words arthron, meaning joint, and podus, which means foot. The phylum arthropoda includes honeybees, spiders, prawns, and centipedes. Arthropoda is the largest phylum with 800,000 different kinds of insects. 80% of the animal kingdom is included within this phylum. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical and segmented. Arthropoda are triploblastic animals with a true coelom. These insects breathe through their tracheae. Their circulatory system is open, so the blood does not flow through blood vessels. The coelomic cavity is filled with blood. The name mollusca is derived from Latin. It means thin-shelled and soft. Phylum mollusca includes chitin, mussel, snail, and octopus. Mollusks are aquatic in habitat. Their bodies are soft and comprise head, visceral mass, and foot. Locomotion in mollusks is by means of a muscular foot. Their bodies are enclosed in a hard, calcareous shell. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical 
and less segmented. Mollusks are triploblastic animals with a reduced coelomic cavity. Water mollusks breathe through gills, while land mollusks have lungs and their circulatory systems are open. Excretion in the mollusca phylum is carried out by kidney-like organs. Echinodermata are spiny-skinned organisms and get their name from the Greek word echinos, meaning protective spines, and derma, meaning skin. The phylum Echinodermata includes starfish, sea cucumbers, and sea urchins. Echinoderms are exclusively free-living and they are marine animals. The skeletons of echinoderms are made of hard calcium carbonate. Echinoderms are radially symmetrical. Their bodies have three layers, called triploblastic, and they have a true coelomic cavity. Their bodies have tube-like extensions, called tube feet, which help in locomotion and food collection. Protochordata belong to the phylum Chordata and are primitive chordates. They include balanoglossus, herdomania, and amphioxus. Protochordates are marine animals. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical. They are triploblastic and have true coelomes. Protochordates show a new feature of body design, namely notochord, at least at some stages during their lives. The notochord is a long, rod-like support that runs all along the back of the animal, separating the nervous tissue from the gut. However, notochord remains associated with their life cycle only during their early stage of development. Notochord provides a place for muscles to be attached for ease of movement. Subphylum chordata or vertebrata is classified into different classes based on bilateral symmetry, notochord, dorsal nerve cord, paired gill pouches, triploblastic, and coelomate. Vertebrates are grouped into five classes, namely Pisces, Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves, and Mammalia. Let's take a look at each of these classes. Pisces includes all types of fishes. Fishes are cold blooded animals and aquatic in habitat. Fishes have a spindle shaped body that is covered with scales. Fishes breathe through gills and their hearts are two chambered. Fishes reproduce by laying eggs. Some fishes have skeletons made entirely of cartilage, such as sharks, and others have a bony skeleton, such as seahorses and flying fish. Amphibians include salamanders, frogs, and toads. 
Amphibians are cold-blooded animals. They are the first in the phylum vertebrates to have four limbs, each with five digits. Hence they are called tetrapods. Amphibians are seen both on land and in the water. All amphibians have mucus glands on their skin and they do not have scales. Amphibians breathe through gills or lungs and their hearts are three-chambered. Amphibians reproduce by laying eggs. Reptilia includes lizards, chameleons, flying lizards, snakes, crocodiles and turtles. Reptilia are cold-blooded animals and are terrestrial in habitat. They have four limbs with five fingers or toes and hence they are called pentadactyle tetrapods. Reptiles have a scaly skin which is resistant to drying out. Reptiles breathe through their lungs. Their hearts are three-chambered with the exception of crocodiles which have four-chambered hearts. Reptiles are also egg-laying animals and unlike amphibians, they lay their eggs on land. All birds like sparrows, penguins and eagles fall in the Aves category. Do you think having wings make an animal a bird? Bats and houseflies have wings, but they are not birds. So animals are classified as birds only if they have feathers. Their forelimbs are modified into wings with feathers and bear three clawless digits and their hind limbs are strong and are developed for walking. Birds are warm-blooded animals and are arboreal in habitat. Birds breathe through their lungs and have four-chambered hearts. Aves are also egg-laying animals. Mammalia includes bears, camels, bats, dolphins, kangaroos and humans. All mammals are warm-blooded animals. Their skins are covered with hair, sweat glands and oil glands that regulate body temperature therefore allowing them to live in diverse habitats. For example, polar bears live in very cold areas, camels live in hot areas, and dolphins live in the ocean. Mammals have milk-producing glands called mammary glands to nourish their young ones. Mammals breathe through their lungs and their hearts are four-chambered. Mammals give birth to young ones through different modes. Mammals like platypus lay eggs. Mammals like kangaroos give birth to underdeveloped young ones that are carried in their mother's abdominal pouch. Mammals like humans, elephants and lions produce live offspring.